Welcome back to Robert Lowe, where I show you the ins and outs of graphic design as it pertains to t-shirts, logos, and GIF animations. And today for T-Shirt Tuesday, I just want to create a hand glitch effect in Illustrator. Now this is just something that you see a lot in pop culture. It's just a small little glitch that you can just kind of put on t-shirts whenever you want to. It does take concentration to do, and you do have to draw out your elements, which is why I'm preferring to do this in Illustrator. But if you do this correctly, you're not using a lot of colors, so you won't be charged a lot, and it's pretty easy to do. So with that being said, you guys, I hope you guys learn a lot in this one. Hope you guys like this one, and if you do, give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, you just kind of discovered me, then go ahead and subscribe. I do this all the time. As a matter of fact, this is a new series, but if you go through my channel, you see all kinds of effects that I've already done, and you can replicate on your own. And if you have any ideas for a new effect that you might want to see in T-Shirt Tuesday, then let me know in the comment section below. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and make magic. Okay, so now that I'm an illustrator, all I need to really do is just kind of lock down my image real quick. So this is on layer one. And I'm just going to go ahead and go over here next to the eyeball. I'm just going to go ahead and click here. And that's just going to lock it down. So now this can't be selected. That's pretty much what you want because Illustrator does get kind of like messy if you don't lock down your layers and stuff like that. Now that we have that locked in, all I need to do is go to my paintbrush and just kind of go around it. Now, like I said, this is a technique that you want to use with maybe a drawing tablet. I use my iPad Pro and uh, I use Astro Pad. I know I plug Astro Pad a lot, but it's been helping me out. I've used the Wacom tabs and all other type of different tablets and stuff like this. This tablet actually lets you draw on the actual iPad. So you can see what you're doing. You get accuracy and all that stuff. And because we're in Illustrator, the lines kind of fix itself. So I can be kind of shaky and it'll fix itself out. I can pretty much just draw my name and it It'll fix itself out the way it's supposed to look so you guys want to be able to do that on a pad or at least a tablet that's reliable and i always say use astro pad get you an ipad pro get the pencil for an extra hundred dollars you can get you a, a nice drawing tablet and this is what i like to use my ipad pro for but going back to this i really don't need to mess with the pressure sensitivity and all that stuff all i need to do is just pick the brush and just go ahead and start off so the way i like to do this is just start really slow go around the palm and just go around this finger right here and then bring it back in like so Really all you want to do is just get the outlines. You can fix it all up afterwards. So now that we have that much, we kind of want to just go ahead and get some of these creases and these fingers like this right here. And maybe just this right here. I'm not sure what this is called. So you guys let me know what that is. But with the brush, just go through and just create those lines. All right, now if we turn off the finger layer, this is what we kind of got. So we know that we got to fix out some of these lines and stuff like that. Like this looks really bad here and right there, but it looks pretty good right now. So I can continue going. I need to get just a few more details out. So I'm gonna create another layer. And with this one, I just wanna get the fingernails out, so. Now just a few more details, which is just basically these joints or whatnot. I just wanna get some of that out right there. Some of these creases here, and maybe just this one right here and just some stuff on the knuckles and we'll pretty much be good to go into the next effect so let me get this now okay and this is looking pretty good i like the way it's moving all i need to do is just connect this bottom right here and make that line right there like that i'm gonna go ahead and pretty much put all of these into one layer and then i'm gonna lock that layer down as well all right and then make a new layer and put that up under layer eight or whatever you want to call that and just do some extra stuff but now that i have this now all i want to do is just zoom in really good and just make some lines to go across this so holding shift and just moving across in a straight line will give me exactly what i want this is what we know is like line shading where well, you don't have to be completely good at it but it helps if you are good at it as a matter of fact with just these three i can pretty much select those and just kind of move it up like this and then do it again and then do it again but now that i got that much what i'm gonna do is just pretty much command c that make another layer and then put that inside of this layer and now i can just move that anywhere i want to so i could put that maybe like 
like over here and i'm not really worried about it you know coming out the sides or anything like that i'm gonna be doing some trimming and all that but i could probably move this down some or just kind of use it for like a shadow so because i have layer 8 locked down all i need to do is just take the eraser tool and just go around these edges or whatnot just to make sure that it fits inside the proportions <laughs> Okay, so now that I got this, and this is looking pretty good, by the way, what I want to do is just fix out these lines, because some of these lines don't connect, some of these lines kind of intersect and stuff like that. This is pretty much what I call refinement, so I'm going to go ahead and lock these down, and I'm going to use the direct selection tool to just zoom in and just kind of fix these lines. So right here, I'm just going to click on the anchor and just kind of move it up. Same thing like right here. Just kind of refining everything and just making it all fit, because you don't want these lines to just intersect each other and just be all over the place. You want something that's kind of clean and just, you know, working out. So that's the way I like to work. I know I was watching one guy and he was saying that he liked to use the pencil tool for this type of stuff, which is cool too. So, I mean, everybody has their process of doing things. <laughs> And that looks good. I, I can honestly say that this is looking pretty well. I like how all of this stuff is working together. So now that I have this, what I'm going to do is just put all of these into one group. And I'm going to name this group Hand 1. So what I want to do is somewhat kind of like a glitch thing. Not too much really glitchy, but something that can be understood as a glitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to open up a new layer. And I'm going to select that new layer. I'm just going to go ahead and lock down this Hand 1. And in the new layer, I'm going to go to Edit and then pasting back and then i'm gonna turn off the hand one and the only reason why i did this is because i don't want to mess anything up because if i do mess up i can have something to go back on but now that i have hand two made i'm gonna go ahead and change its color of its strokes to maybe a light blue and that looks good so i'm gonna do this again i'm gonna go ahead and make another layer i'm gonna go to edit i'm gonna put pasting back and then i'm gonna turn off hand two and i'm gonna make this one maybe like uh, a pinkish kind of red you know something like this i'm just gonna kind of shift layer 12 over just slightly ever so slightly and i just want to do this one more time i'm gonna make one more layer and that's gonna be layer 13 i'm just gonna go ahead and paste in the back all right and i want to make this one like somewhat kind of a yellow i'm gonna throw that there but instead of that being on top of everything i'm gonna move that under layer two or hand two and I'm going to shift that over just a few pixels or a few spaces to the right to get this. All right. And when I zoom out, we have that glitch kind of effect, which that's exactly what I was looking for. This is looking pretty good. And that's pretty much it for this effect right here, you guys. So if this was something that you guys wanted to learn how to do, then that's pretty much it. So I'm going to do some extra stuff. But this right here is the base of what we were trying to do today. And if you guys like this effect, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up. But I'm going to go ahead and finish this one out by adding a message and all that stuff and just kind of doing my own little style thing here. So And so now that we got this, all I need to do is just give this design some movement. So what I'm going to do is just create lines like here, maybe one right here and maybe one right here. And then with this, I'll just copy this over into layer 17, paste it. So what I want to do is just kind of match this up right here like this and just kind of object transform it reflect it and then do a vertical reflection i just kind of move it over like this now that's pretty cool and i think the message for this is pretty much on point if i keep this in you know if the t-shirt is actually just white and we just keep it in white you know don't put it in any other type of color this works out so i think what i want to do is just at the bottom add promise there and that'll be the end of this all right so what i need to do is just make a circle with the ellipse tool and just kind of scale it out like so and then using the type to path tool i'll just pretty much create a path and i'll type out what i need to type out which is promise so it came in on the outside and that's not what i wanted i actually wanted the inside i needed to be down here somewhere so what i want to do is just over here with the move tool just kind of zoom in and it, when you see this kind of like point right here, just kind of sticking out, just kind of click it and drag it in. So what that did was it just kind of flipped it from one side to the inside. Now, and that's pretty cool. And from here, what I want to do is just kind of scale it up some like so. And then kind of stretch this out. And just my one final tweak was just pretty much what you know me as or you know my signature to be. Just so you guys know that it's my design. I like to make my O's crossed. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to scale this down and just kind of cross my O. Yeah. Uh. 
And with that final tweak, you guys, that is it. So I hope you guys like this one. This was pretty fun for me. I haven't done this glitch effect in about uh, maybe a few years, really. But I love bringing back these oldies and goodies. I hope you guys liked it, and I hope you guys kind of picked up on what I was doing. So if you did actually learn something, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you just discovered me, hey, I do this all the time. Just go ahead and subscribe. As a matter of fact, just check out my channel. I do this all the time, like I said. And if you have any questions or concerns, or maybe you want me to do a different effect for you specifically on screen, let me know in the comment section below. But with that being said, you guys, let's go ahead and get up out of here. So stay amazing, stay creative, but above all else, stay awesome.